I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and it's a dogfight battle between two brothers, the HTC One S and the HTC Droid Incredible 4G LTE. They're both hot, high-end Android smartphones with a little bit of a different spec list, slightly, but not by much. One's on T-Mobile, one's on Verizon, different screen sizes, but all in all, they're both high-end Android smartphones. Which one will win in the dogfight? We're going to find out. But first, some love to Best Buy Mobile for hooking us up with phones like the One S and like the Droid Incredible 4G LTE, both of which they've actually hooked us up with for use in our One Paul Bandit giveaway game, which we turn around and give to you on the site. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, you'll walk out working. That'll be set up your email, your web, your contacts, all that stuff. So when you walk out the door, you're good to go. You don't have to waste your time setting anything up at Best Buy Mobile. I know a few people in my life that that would be particularly handy for, and I'm sure you do too. Check it out at Best Buy Mobile. You'll walk out working. Dogfight time, 1S, Droid Incredible 4G LTE. Let's go take a look and see which one reigns supreme. These devices may seem similar in a lot of respects, but they're actually pretty different. They're both HTC devices, but you know what? They're different carriers and they do have some different features. This is the HTC One S. It was one of the original One devices that was announced by HTC in Barcelona at Mobile World Congress earlier in the year, February, to be exact. It's packing a 1.5 gigahertz dual core Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 CPU, a 4.3 inch Super AMOLED display. You've got an eight megapixel camera on the back with 1080p HD video recording. You've got a front-facing camera, Android 4.0, also known as Ice Cream Sandwich, with HTC Sense version four. It's in a very pocketable form factor. It fits great in the hand. 4.3 inches, a nice sweet spot for a lot of people, and it has a non-removable 1,650 milliamp hour battery, all housed in a beautiful build here with a nice unibody metal construction with a flap here you can remove to access the micro SIM card slot. It's so really a nice device. It's not the One X, and I find that people either like the One X or the One S. They prefer one of the design elements. They prefer the features of one device. I like the features of the One X, but I actually prefer the design personally of the HTC One S. Love the metal, and I think 4.3 inches is a great sweet spot for a lot of people that maybe think something like the One X, the Galaxy S3, is a little bit too big. Then you have the Droid Incredible 4G LTE, and when you hear reviewers talk about this device, they'll most often reference the HTC One S, which is obviously this device, because it's very similar in a lot of ways. It's a little bit different. Spec-wise, it's not quite as powerful, but very similar in some respects. It's got a 1.2 gigahertz dual-core TI OMAP, or excuse me, 1.2 gigahertz dual-core Snapdragon S4 CPU, a four-inch display. So the processor, same family, clocked a little bit slower. The display, a little bit smaller, four inches as opposed to 4.3 inches. You've got an eight megapixel camera with 1080p HD video recording. Unfortunately, it doesn't have HTC's image sense technology. You have a front-facing camera, a 1,700 milliamp hour battery, so a little bit of a bigger battery. And the benefit on this device, it is non-removable, or it is removable rather, so you can take off the back and access it from there. Now this thing looks a lot like a smaller HTC Resound in a lot of ways. The design, very much Verizon's Droid-like design here, Beats Audio integrated on both of these devices, and Android 4.0, like I said, with HTC Sense version 4. So, a little bit of a smaller display. It's missing some of the specifications of the One S. It's also available on Verizon for $149.99. So, price-wise, exactly the same. Let's take a look at the specs on both of these devices. First of all, you're going to notice a lot of similarities. Where you will see some differences, obviously, besides the network ID, you've got your clear and settings buttons up here. You'll see notifications where you will see a difference on Verizon. This pesky, annoying, ongoing Wi-Fi notification. Take a look at this, and you'll see that even when I'm in the menu, and let's say I clear out everything. I'll go ahead and clear all this stuff out and go back. You can see that that Wi-Fi notification stays in the top left-hand corner regardless of where you are or what you're doing on the actual device. It's Verizon's way of saying, hey, you got a limited amount of data. Go ahead and connect to Wi-Fi if it's available. That said, I shouldn't have to have my device tell me that. It's frustrating that I can't disable that. It is a constantly ongoing notification that I can't remove, and that's pretty irritating. Otherwise, you don't get that on T-Mobile. You don't get that on AT&T's 1X or you don't get that on the Evo 4G LTE on Sprint. It's just a Verizon thing. It's rolling out to several of their smartphones, most recently on their tablets as well, with the Galaxy Tab 2 7.0. Now, out of the gate, though, you do get bloatware on both of these devices, and unfortunately, you can't uninstall it. You've got 411 and more, Amazon, Amazon Kindle, you've got Vcast. You can access this stuff just by scrolling over to Verizon apps over on the Droid Incredible, and this is 4G LTE, and this is where you'll see some differences. Take a look down here. You have frequent downloads, here you have frequent downloads and a dedicated Verizon folder. So here you can see the Verizon stuff, Amazon MP3, Vcast apps, Let's Golf 3 HD, Mobile Hotspot, My Verizon Mobile, NFL Mobile, Real Racing 2, Psycho Radio, Slingbox, Vcast Tones, Visual Voicemail, which like I've said in the past, 
an additional $299 per month, VZ Navigator, Verizon Video, and that's your Verizon suite of applications. And over here you get 411 and more, game-based Google Plus integration, which obviously is a Google thing, and then you see T-Mobile Hotspot, more for me, T-Mobile My Account, T-Mobile Name ID, T-Mobile TV, Visual Voicemail, TuneIn Radio, Where's My Water, and more. Search, Play Store, and Menu. I do like the fact that all of these things stay static at the top part of the display, and then of course you've got your different menu areas over here. Now, of course, you can see that down here when we go to all, I've got three pages and I can swipe over the same way. So obviously, like I said, Sense 4 running on both of these devices, a top ice cream sandwich. So the overall user interface, very similar in a lot of respects. Where you do see some difference here, we'll go into messaging on this device. Let me find it, pull it up closer to my screen. Oh, there we go, perfect. And you'll see some differences here. Search, compose, menu, all up there in the top right-hand corner. But down on the Verizon device, you see all messages, SMS slash MMS, and visual voicemail. Now, visual voicemail on this device is integrated into the messaging folder, whereas over here, it's not. So you can see composes up here just like normal, but on that one, it'll integrate between your, your typical text messages and voicemail. So Sense Keyboard pre-installed on this. It is a new version of Sense, or HTC Sense Keyboard that in my opinion is much improved. That said, everybody has keyboards that they love and hate on Android devices, and uh, this one may be one you love or hate. Also, 4.3 inch display as opposed to a four inch display. It's ever so slightly larger, but when you're typing, it is a noticeable difference. Take a look here and you can see a little bit of a screen real estate difference. Landscape, pretty decent on this one. I did find it troubling when I was in portrait mode to type on the Droid Incredible 4G LTE. That said, we'll come down here and say the quick brown fox. It's happy he is here today. Quick brown fox visited the office today. So quick brown fox is happy is here today. He is here today, excuse me. And then down here we'll say the same thing. The quick brown fox is happy he is here today. Quick Brown Fox, he is happy, or as happy he is here today. Portrait and landscape transitions on both devices, nice and fast. Now, I want to call out one more thing, and before I do that, I'll be the first to tell you, you can get additional keyboards through Google Play. There's an official Jelly Bean, or an unofficial, rather, Jelly Bean keyboard. There's, of course, Swipe. There's things like Swift Key between Google Play and individually downloading. You can access those and put those on these devices. Now, that said, and actually, I'll show you one little feature uh, right here where I can go through and highlight and go back to my different text. So if I misspell something or I have trouble typing something, I can either add a dictionary or I can delete that individual area of words. So take a look at the design here for a moment with me. You've got a micro USB charging port on the left side on the 1S. You have a volume rocker over here. You've got your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack up top with a power button. Kind of the same layout here too on both. You get your power buttons in the same area headphone jacks in the same area, where it does differ a little bit, your micro USB charging ports, but your volume rockers are on the same side. But again, very much a droid look and feel here, falls right in line with Verizon's design scheme for their past HTC devices. And then over here, you've got this nice new uh, design that fits very closely in with the One Series, the One X, and then the lower end, One V. So, depends on what you like. If plastic's your thing, if you like that droid design, you like kind of the way it looks, more of a robotic look and feel with the red accents, the Droid Incredible 4G LTE will be better for you. If you like a metal device, a unibody metal device at that, that fits well in the hand and offers a little bit of a bigger display, but still keeps it pocketable, the One S may be a better device for you. Let's load up PhoneDog.com on both of these devices. Now, both of these are 4G devices. Verizon's is 4G LTE. This is HSPA Plus, also known as 4G on T-Mobile, HSPA Plus, 42 megabits per second at that. But you can see pinch to zoom, relatively responsive on both, despite the fact that the clock speed on this one is a little bit slower, you don't really see any noticeable lag. It's relatively quick, so relatively quick and fast. So again, relatively responsive there. You've got your menu options here where you can access those. And again, portrait to landscape transitions nice and fast. So despite a sl uh, lower clock speed over here on the Droid Incredible 4G LTE, you really don't see a speed drop when it comes to little things like web browsing. I think where I see the biggest difference on the Droid Incredible 4G LTE is really in the display size. I mean, it sounds weird, but that 4.3 to 4 inch gap is really noticeable. And I think it may for me have been because I moved down from a 1X and, and a Galaxy S3 immediately down into testing the Droid Incredible 4G LTE. Then I went back to this, then I went back to that. But so I do notice a difference. This is very comfortable to me, even at 4.3 inches, still very pocketable, but it's a comfortable size in terms of the display. Over here, a little bit on the small side. Now, if you're coming up from an iPhone or something with a 3.7 inch display, you may be fine. But for me personally, I've been working with a couple of different devices. The One X, I've been carrying the Galaxy S3 for almost eight weeks now on my personal line. And so after getting used to a bigger display, it's kind of hard to go down to that smaller unit. Stay tuned for part two, because we're gonna take a look at the camera settings, widgets, 
all kinds of good customizations and more.